Okay, um, just wanted to give you an idea today of uh, what has been going on with uh, the LG G4, uh, which I purchased um, last week. It came in last week, and I just want to give you my experience with it, and um, essentially the problems I've had with it, and um, now realistically the need to return the TV. Um, this is actually a good, uh, sorry about the, the picture quality, I was just uh, recording this on my phone. I just wanted to either talk, I wanted to talk about something while maybe a video was playing, but um, as well I just wanted to capture it in um, something that wasn't uh, just a still image, so you could just see it sometimes, the way things look and, and things like that. But um, this, um, this image here is actually a really good uh, place to start because this is essentially the majority of this TV's issue, right? Yes, there's lights on, so, um, and I'm not talking about uh, watching movies in a lit room at all. Um, as you can see, I have a blackout curtain here. When I watch movies, there is no light in the room whatsoever. Zero. Absolutely zero light. There's no, um, I, talked to the installer of the like the curtains and said look I don't want anything coming in zero um, so even if it's three o'clock in the afternoon or something like that this room is black so we can watch um, we can watch movies at any time uh, that is the beauty of that and um, <clears throat> excuse me um, this this obsession really of watching movies in complete darkness really came about because of this LG C9 which was uh, my first introduction uh, introduction sorry to uh, an OLED display um, one of the reasons I went to an OLED display was um, the previous TV I bought um, a month before that was a Sony uh, I honestly do not remember the model now, but it was a flagship LCD, LED, one, one of those, right? Um, that technology. Unfortunately, um, the blooming was so bad that when anything went um, close to a 235 border, it also illuminated that. And if you have read my reviews or just even seen like what I post about on even Twitter and stuff like that right I can't have that I can't I cannot have I cannot watch images like that <laughs> there's just no way right um, if you imagine like a person that is extremely picky about video and picture quality I um, I would consider myself a video file uh, essentially um, like an audio file, somebody that is chasing the very best in picture quality. And, um, you know, I am extremely picky about certain things. Like, they have to be certain ways. Um, if a tech exists that gives me what I'm after, I'm willing to pay the price, right? And that was one of the reasons uh, for going, uh, going with an OLED is... Um, I was willing to pay that uh, 5000 uh, whatever they was asking at the time when the C9 was out in 2018. I was willing to pay that price because I'd had it, uh, I'd, I'd had enough essentially of uh, LED tech, right? I, I, I couldn't watch it anymore. I just couldn't watch it. Um, even projectors, you know, I, I, can't, I, I struggle to watch them. Right, I, I just, I've been for demos of, you know, $20,000 projectors. I can't watch them. They're, they're just, it's just not, I, ca I, I cannot go backwards. Uh, it's just, you know, something I, I can't do. Uh, getting a little off track here, but I just want to give you an idea of where I'm coming from and uh, the type of person that I actually am, right? So we have, uh, I think this is steel. This is a steel... Um, bezel uh, around the TV, right? And I didn't really think anything of it when, um, you know, I did, it's just something I didn't think about um, to even check or, or you know. Um, but this be uh, bezel, uh, the, the outer edge of the TV, um, is, like, is, is lipped 
Um, it's not flat with the screen. Uh, this is an issue um, because of the way, well, it, sound and light, the way they, the way they distribute. Um, and this is reflective, by the way, right? This, this, uh, this is actually reflective. And um, just one other thing as well. The edge of the screen doesn't actually end here. The, the edge of the actual um, screen that gives you picture, right, that is, that is visible is just on the edge, right? It's very, very just on the edge. Then there's black, a little black, and then there's the bezel of the outer edge of the TV. This is the same on all TVs. Um, my C9 also has that a little edge of black, and then it goes to the edge, actual edge of the screen. Um, yeah, this is this is typical. This is this is completely fine as well. Um, unfortunately, um, we just um, you know we we sat down. Um, you know we we like look. Let's uh, let's just demo some movies, and. Um, one of the first movies we put on was Oppenheimer, and um, you know all the it was it was dark out anyway. Um, but but you know we had all the lights turned off, everything was black, and um, we started noticing when when uh, the image was bright, ish. Um, I would say anything above fifty percent of the maximum TV's brightness. Um, you could see, you could see the image actually reflecting off of this. And I was then made aware of where the edge of the TV was. Um, once me and my brother seen this, um, instantly my heart dropped, right? Because uh, it, 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 that, that's really how I am. It's like, oh my God, there, there's an issue with this TV. And it's like, you know, you've waited all of these years from, say, the, uh, the C9 all the way to the G4 which was five, six years, right? Six years. That's six years of tech and development, right? That's six years of tech and development. And you buy this TV with the, um, the hope that is, it is going to destroy the current TV you, you actually have, right? The LG C9. And when we saw this issue, we, we could not stop seeing it. We, you know, we, we put on um, another movie, um, uh, Last Wish, um, Puss in Boots. I just wanted to see what an animation looked like because Puss in Boots is a very bright and colorful disc um, on 4K at least. Uh, and um, same there. Like, we could just see the colors reflecting off of the screen to the bezel itself. Um, I'm the type of person that when I see something that is wrong or something you know something that cannot be resolved in any way i tap out right i'm like okay this i'm i'm, I'm returning the tv right i that that was my instant i was like i can't i can't watch this so let's actually play some just some video and again i'm sorry about the picture I, you know it's only recorded on my phone i just wanted to give you a quick idea of this uh, bezel uh, what is actually happening here um, on this? This is a, an 83 inch uh, screen. Uh, this was $6,500. And again, I'm, look, I'm willing to pay the price um, on tech that is extremely, extremely high end, right? And uh, what I'm trying to do here is just really show is. Uh, there's a lip, like I said, it, it, this, this sticks out. Now, if it was flat, um, completely flat against the screen, I don't think there'd be any issues whatsoever. But this bezel sticks out from the screen and light just, it just, it just hits, it just hits the side of the screen. I cannot know where the edge of the screen is, right? It's as simple as that. With OLED, you have um, this level of immersion uh, with OLED is, uns you know, it, it, um, you cannot get that from other techs, right? LCD, for instance. Well, 
in a black room, I know where the edge of the screen is because I, I can see the 235 borders. On a projector, if you're not using a masking system at least, um, I know where the, the edge of the screen is because I know where the 235 borders are because they stick out and they're gray, right? Now, some people might say, well, my, mine aren't gray, mine are, are, they're dark, they're not pitch black. To me, they're gray, right? When you have an OLED and you've been watching an OLED for six years, when you go and see that tech and you see those screens, it, it, it looks as though the blacks are completely washed out, right? That's how, that's how when you get used to watching an OLED, it, it really becomes a problem. Um, so yeah, this was, uh, this really is the, uh, you know, the, the, the issue with this TV. Um, and like I said, once I started, uh, watching, watching it and we, we saw it, there was no end seeing it. Um, so yeah. Um, now if you are considering buying this TV, um, I, I, I'm not here to like uh, put you off of buying and upgrading to a new TV or anything like that that you will enjoy, right? Or anything like that. But there are things that you need to consider. If you watch OLEDs in a black room, right? No light, zero, absolutely zero light, complete controlled room. Like we've done everything possible to stop light coming into this room. If you, if you do that, I would, at the very least, demo the TV first um, and see if you can, I don't know, see if you can get it in a, in a real demo room where you could actually turn lights off and see how this, this really affects it. Um, I'm not sure if the C4 has this type of uh, bezel. Unfortunately, the C4 doesn't have all the tech that's in the G4. So I don't know if that's going to be a pass down or trickle down in 2025, then you upgrade. Because if the C4 doesn't have all the latest stuff, I'm not buying it. All right. I'm just not, I'm not going to buy it. Because um, one of the reasons is as well is because what I saw from this TV um, compared to the LG C9 that they actually have already, the upgrades were just not big enough either. Right. Yes, this uh, this was the biggest factor, and I think I could have gotten over some of this other stuff, um, but I did not see a big enough upgrade either. Now, um, this does show that the screen is reflective. However, I'm not sure what they're using on their screens. Um, it is not a mirror like the LG C9 is. The LG C9 is, is it's almost like a mirror, right? It is so reflective. And that reflective um, screen does not influence the detail on the screen either. So what I mean by this is when I put the TV on for the first time and it was booting up, I was just sitting on my seat, which is like just here, right? I'm just like just past this. The first thing, the, the instant first thing I thought was, this doesn't look very sharp, right? It doesn't have that clarity that the C9 has. The, C, the C9 is pin, pin, pixel sharp. This isn't. I was like, okay, maybe it's just the menus. Um, but I noticed as well, like just watching um, Oppenheimer and the other movies, there was a bunch of other movies too. It didn't have that um, crystal pin sharp look that my C9 had. And I, th I think it's to do with the screen. Um, this reflective coating and screen that they're using, it's actually affecting the image. And again, I, I'm pointing out how picky about picture quality I am. This in some ways actually affects film grain. Now, some people don't like it. I am a lover an enjoyer of movies with film grain, right? And if an image on my screen is now softer because of the screen they're actually using, it's a downgrade. It's a downgrade from a six-year-old OLED, right? Um, and I, I, you know, I just, I, 
after this and then you know with the softness thing i just that it was just another thing to to add on top um so um well i went through the menus and i i didn't like the, the this new menu system i think it got introduced in the c1 i think this this like um modern uh menu system i personally prefer the navigation on the c9 right everything with picture quality is related to picture quality in that section right but i can adjust some picture quality settings like even in the general setting i think um and it's just i don't know i i i didn't i didn't love the menu probably again th this is just a usability error uh, or, or a problem though you know i would have gotten used to it this is you know when you when you're so used to using something something new is foreign and it's like eh, I actually prefer the other, other way. That's prob probably that. Um, but uh, there's another thing as well. So I, I switched um, to filmmaker mode. Um, so for anyone that doesn't know and is, hasn't bought a TV with filmmaker mode, what it does, it, compared to a C9, what it does is it puts everything into the settings that I would pick for a TV. <laughs> right? That's all it did. Um, so on the C9, I use cinema. Uh, cinema home is the day mode. Cinema is the night mode. And cinema is the most accurate mode. So when you switch um, the G4 to um, uh, filmmaker mode, it all it does is put the TV into the same mode or apply the same settings that I was using on my C9. You know, uh, this is fine. This is f this is fine for the um, uninitiated uh, uh, people, I guess you could say, that really don't know what settings um, to use, uh, what's what is right to use when you're actually watching movies, or you want the most accurate content. So this is fine. Um, for me, it was unnecessary. Right? I, d I don't need I don't need filmmaker mode. Um, I could I could just put it in cinema mode and put all the same settings as, as that. Whether there's differences there, um, I wasn't, um, I didn't have the TV long enough. Um, the TV's downstairs now, it's getting ready for a return. Um, I didn't play around with that uh, enough to see, you know, whether there's actually a difference there. This is something that I would have just talked to my calibrator about though and say, what is the most accurate mode? Um, filmmaker mode or cinema and we'd have worked it out from there so um wasn't really worried too too worried about it anyway though all of my demos though were done with um filmmaker mode um on um a, another thing uh going back to the resolution thing and the detail thing um yes i'm sure people are saying well did you put it on this mode and did you put it on this mode so all uh, power saving modes were turned off. And another thing uh, some people may pick up on as well is, yes, it was, I turned on Just Scan. Uh, if you don't know, if you, if you turn Just Scan off, um, it puts things into Overscan um, where you're not seeing all of the pixels uh, on the screen. So to see every single pixel on the screen, you have to turn on Just Scan. So I wouldn't put it in auto either. Don't put it in auto just in case. Force it on and you absolutely see all of the pixels. So just in case anyone thought that, hey, it might have, may have been soft because you didn't have just scan on. That to me wasn't the case. So there are some reasons why it could have appeared soft. So one is the combination of the screen Two is the combination then of the increased screen size going from 77 inch to uh, an 83. Uh, that, is, that is true. You know, there, there could be those differences in the display of, I mean, essentially you are, in some ways you're stretching, you're stretching your, your 2160p image over a larger area, right? So maybe it's just me seeing it in a softer way like that because you're not gaining pixels but you are um you're increasing the size of the image right um 
One thing as well is um, if you are like me and just kind of want things perfect as well, um, this is a um, Sanus uh, uh, stand. It is not an official stand. And um, I think the official stand maybe comes out later, like maybe a month after, which is disappointing, right? Because we were like, well, why? Why do, why do we have to wait for an official stand uh, to come out that doesn't, doesn't get released with the TV? Like, to me, that's odd, right? Um, so anyway, we was like, okay, well, let's, uh, let's use this stand. I really dislike this stand. One of the reasons is, is this TV is far away, right? Um, my, it, it, this has doubled the distance of how far the TV is away from um, my rack here, right? The C9 would have ended, like, say, here, right? Again, about halfway. So th this stand is... It's almost like there was no reason for the for the TV to be on the back of the stand. Um, I wanted it like in the middle. I, I know there could be some weight thing going on here as well, so there is that. And this isn't really related to the TV, but I just wanted to talk about my entire experience of what I what I really had here. And because the TV was pushed back, we didn't really appreciate the size increase going from 77 to 83 because the TV was pushed further back. And it's just, you know, it's just for me, the, now, we're, now we are compounding like the things that I don't like about our purchase. And for me, it's not about the money because I'm, again, I'm willing to spend what I need to to get better picture quality and a better experience. The problem is, though, is you're paying $6,500 and everything in the experience, for me, has gone down. It has not met the performance standard that I expected from my C9. It doesn't match that. So um, it, it's just, for me, it was disappointing, right? Another thing, and this, uh, before anybody reacts to this as well, OLEDs, um, from my understanding, and again, this was a long time ago, so I can't remember this on my C9 as it being an issue because I was coming from um, an LED anyway, and I kind of probably didn't appreciate like what was happening, but I'm pretty sure the 100 hours um, on a TV is needed to bring the black levels out uh, for an OLED, right? It needs those many hours to burn the TV in and allow those black levels to really come out. So there is that, again, there's, you know, this TV to get its at the best out of it does need burning in for at least 100, maybe even 200 hours to get its best. Then you would calibrate, right? Because the TV is now stable, it is, um, it's looking as good as it can be. Uh, but we put on, again, Oppenheimer, and it was the scene where um, Oppenheimer was telling, um, uh, what's his name? Oppen Oppenheimer was on the train telling him that he'd met um, the bad guy, you know, the bad guy. And um, I can't remember their names now. Uh, I was, I, that's the thing, you do a video and you can't remember. Anyway, there was on the train, he was explaining, hey, I, I was talking to somebody about the bad guy and it was, it's a really good scene. And I said to my brother, I'm like, these blacks are crushing like um the blacks on their faces and the way it was lit was actually crushing and i'm like my the c9 has better blacks out of the box right again out of the box not fully burned in um you know the tv was had a less less than one hour on it right um but the blacks just straight up crushed and um Rhodes? Is it Rhodes? Um, yeah, but the, the, I'm like, the blacks are crushing on this scene. I'm like, and then I was testing like some other discs as well. And yeah, the blacks were crushing. Again, though, I think this is a uh, burning issue. You know, you need to burn this uh, TV in and you'll really get the most out of your blacks. But now, you know, when you get... Uh, uh, 
I was telling you earlier about getting that uh, feeling of like a sinking feeling of uh, like like I could feel my heart almost. I'm like, well, we just spend six thousand five hundred dollars on something that I'm just now not impressed with at all, right? Um, the last thing I will talk about um, from from the performance, well, I'll go on to the Spears and Munsell uh, thing as well. Just want to talk about that as quickly as I can. Um, I, to be fair, I didn't notice a massive increase in brightness from my C9. Now, again, getting your 100 hours locked in and maybe even 200 hours locked in on the TV may really open up uh, the picture in brightness in a, in a much different way. This is true. Um, the thing is, though, is um, when you have a... My C9, by the way, is completely professionally calibrated. So um, going from a professionally calibrated display to something that isn't professionally calibrated and you're only in C um, filmmaker mode, I could tell the difference right away. I, you know, I, I was talking to my brother like the entire night about it. I'm like, this, you know, it just doesn't look, it doesn't look good. Um, and it, it's surprising to me how much um, a calibration really, really does improve um, the, the balance of the picture, the tonality. Um, there was just a lot of hot shots um, there are hot shots in uh, Oppenheimer, like that orange look, but it was just accentuated on this display. And um, for anyone that doesn't think that, you know, you don't need to calibrate this display is because you have Dolby Vision and you have Filmmaker mode. Uh, that's in my opinion. You know, this is all my opinion, obviously. Uh, that's wrong. Um, if you want pictures to be abs your colors and your and everything to, to be absolutely perfect they ha it has to be calibrated right and this is really the level of you know picture quality and standards that i expect now from from video right from my picture quality and my experience of watching movies on an oled right um so yeah, um, not really impressed. And let's go on to uh, the next part. Uh, where are we? Uh, here, sorry. Um, so this is with Spears and Munsell. Now, for anyone that doesn't know, Spears and Munsell disc on 4K uh, Blu-ray is is a test disc. Um, there's three discs. And uh, disc two, there's demonstration materials here. Now you can play stuff in Dolby Vision, HDR10+. Um, this is, um, yeah, I, I've, I don't know um, any TV or 4K Blu-ray player that can play H SL HDR2. Um, I don't know. So, um, yeah, that's... Uh, uh, but the, the, you can play the same demo in different nits, right? So you can play this in 10,000 nits. This is HDR. The Dolby Vision is already 10,000 nits. It would just tone map to your display. Same with the same with the uh, HDR10 Plus version. Um, so you can watch this in different nits, right? It's just graded uh, differently. So you can do it from 10,000, uh, 2,000, 1,000 nits. And even 600 nits, right? Um, which is really good um, to see kind of where the limitations of your display are. There is one also really nice thing that you can actually see this in SDR in BT709, right? Um, this is actually pretty, to me, this is actually quite important um, because you want to see how good SDR looks, even in 4K. Now, it's not a, it's not a lot of content, but um, I use this to check certain things, um, especially compared to HDR10, right? Um, so yeah. Um, so right, we're playing um, this at a thousand nits. Want to double check that? Yeah, a thousand nits. And um, yeah, so there is one reason why I'm playing this. Um, 
people will know of uh, how TVs come out of black. So, um, so this is the problem, right? And this has not gotten better from the C9. This is HDR10, right? So you're when we're coming out of black here, right? Actually, I might have gone too far. We're coming out of black, and what you can see around here is like lines, uh, banding, bit depth, um, essentially an artifact of lines, right? It it doesn't have the bit depth um, to create that, whereas uh, the Dolby Vision does. Um, well, actually, I'll, I'll discuss that in a minute as well, the Dolby Vision, so, and even the SDR. So, this is a great test. I can see them, I, I can see them here, these waves of lines, and it's because the um, software and the chip inside doesn't have the bit depth to resolve uh, that error. And I was expecting that shot to be perfect. Um, you know, we're six years on, and my C9 can't do that shot, right? Can't do it. It can It absolutely cannot do that shot. It's an extremely difficult shot to um, to actually get right. But I can, I can see it. I can see them pushing out these lines. And. Um, one thing to say though about this is um, I've never seen this in a real world uh, situation. So do I think it's uh, a really, really bad thing? No. Um, like I watch movies every single day on desk, right? And I have, I have never seen that type of bit depth and banding errors in a movie. Most of the movies are graded. Um, I mean, this is a thousand nits, but you know, mo the movies are graded at a thousand nits. Mo yeah, most of them now. At least pretty much all of them now are. So, yeah, I was just like, okay, well, uh, that's actually very disappointing. Like with a brand new chip, right? And it cannot come out of black perfectly. Uh, so, uh, that was, it was just disappointing, right? Um, so, yeah, I was looking for um, other instances here of... Just, just checking the disc out. Uh, this is actually about 10 minutes long. I probably shouldn't watch it all, right? Um, this is an excellent scene. Maybe not this one, but the next one. Right, so uh, this shot is absolutely excellent to see tone mapping. Now, we're in a 1,000 nits, so you can pretty much... Um, most TVs should be able to tone map this, no problem. If you can't see like all of the stuff going on in the background, and even the snow like crushes out, then it's because your your display can't uh, tone map to whatever the nits may be. Now, if you, if I put this into ten thousand nits, um, this TV still washes out, right? The 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 uh, the backgrounds here just m m mesh into one white color, right? It, the tone mapping is still really not good. Um, for 10,000 nit content and to be fair there isn't any content that is 10,000 nits apart from some obscure games right that could reach up to say 10,000 nits so I'm not going to consider this like really like an issue um, the biggest thing is probably getting stuff tone map though up to 4,000 nits um, that is that there's potential there uh, some of Sony's uh, discs may have uh, 4,000 nit containers because uh, they're using Dolby Vision. And if you didn't have uh, Dolby Vision, uh, I know this is this TV does, but you know um, you could at least watch that and it be tone mapping correctly. So, um, so what I did was um, on this scene, uh, maybe not in this video, but. Um, Wanted to see how good the tone mapping was uh, with 10,000 nits. And um, you c with this TV, you can manually control tone mapping at or you can do it dynamically, um, which I thought was really interesting. So you have a scale from uh, 10 to 100 um, on 
10,000 nits, 4,000 nits, and 1,000 nits, right? You can change the scale of the tone mapper, or the tone mapping. Um, at 10,000 nits, though, I had to come all the way down to 10 to still be able to see almost this, and you, even then you still couldn't uh, see all of it. Um, so, again, for me, I, I just think 10,000 nits on these TVs is just put, it's just overkill, and it's just... It, yes, it has options there to do this and try to show this content and for you to even manually control it. But to me, it just wasn't good enough, right? It's just, for me, it was nowhere near good enough. Again, from moving from the current TV and we're 6,000, uh, sorry, six, uh, six years down the line, the, the tech just has not come far enough. So, uh, you know, that's just my opinion. Um, Another thing, um, you, can, you can't have manual uh, tone mapping on and dynamic tone mapping on at the same time, um, which, uh, which makes sense. But um, you, I switched to between uh, 10,000 nit content with dynamic tone mapping versus uh, 10,000 nits with it all the way scaled down to try and squeeze that image in and to be able to see all of this. And I felt that the dynamic tone mapping just simply looked better. So uh, I, I don't think we have access to the granularity of, and control that dynamic tone mapping does on this TV. Like having a bar slider didn't equate to the same picture quality. You know, it just didn't. Dynamic tone mapping for me looked better. It looked... Um, one thing as well is dynamic tone mapping on an LG C9 makes the image actually pop. It pushes whites to the edge of what the TV can display. So it actually makes the, the image brighter. And um, it can crush blacks, but uh, to be honest, I think there was an update. and Because I don't see it actually crushing blacks anymore, so I, I didn't find that to be an issue. But... Uh, dynamic tone mapping, even on a C9 with 10,000 nits, does a pretty decent job at uh, tone mapping this in HDR10. Pretty, pretty decent. It it looks better than the Panasonic's um, HDR optimizer, and it looks better than when it's off, right? So dynamic tone mapping, for all of its flaws, on a say an LG C9. Um, in this particular scenario, at say 10,000 nit content, it just it looks much better, much much better. Um, so I've uh, one of the one thing as well is um, I've seen this tone mapped um, on a Mad VR um, a show in North Carolina at 10,000 nits, and every piece of snow was um, tone mapped just absolutely perfectly and what it actually looked like uh, looked like was HDR 10 it looked exactly the same as Dolby Vision it didn't look any different that's how good of a tone mapping um, software that say Mad VR uses now Mad VR is like ten thousand dollars so you know <laughs> That's just, uh, you know, there's there's points where I will spend money, but then there's $10,000 and I'm like, mm, I can't do that, you know, so. So yeah, um, again, uh, having the manual control here for tone mapping, I was disappointed, right? F and again, this is for HDR10. In Dolby Vision, this, um, this looks as it should do. Um, and it does on my C9, it looks, it actually looks the same. Um, uh, you can test here as well for bit depth uh, errors, but um, you know um, now here's here's a thing as well is this shot here, and there's a lot of other ones as well where it, these this is so fine. Um, this guy's fur, all right. He he his fur is so fine and detailed. It is crazy on my C9, but it felt a little softer. On this screen and again this this could be due to picture size but it could also have a little bit of a compounding issue again with the screen so uh, I don't know you know I, I don't know um, 
you have to understand as well um i do keep up with oled reviews and the tech itself but i'm not going out and demoing you know oleds every week right i don't really know uh from year to year the differences in the actual screens themselves and that type of thing so um so so directly coming from a c9 to this screen um again i just felt as if it was a downgrade um this is a soft shot anyway um yeah so i'm just go i'm just really uh where is the water um uh bit depth here was all fine all right there, there's no no issues here or anything like that now here is another one where the blades of uh well, i wouldn't even well i guess they are grass it is a grass type um it just wasn't as fine on the c9 uh, on on this g4 sorry it just wasn't as fine as as my c9 it's just I, it just looked softer so um yeah Uh, this is actually a good shot to see uh, how good your tone mapping is on your TV because you should be able to see a sun here and on screen you can um, it's just uh, the camera you know exposed your exposure and stuff so um, let's move on because um, you know this is a, this is um, me just going on about this about how this disc looks uh, again another another shot where I could tell that the TV wasn't calibrated. It just didn't have the pop um, that my C9 had. So, um, and that's, it, I don't know, again, it just showed me how powerful uh, a calibration is on this. When you get so used to seeing these, I mean, you don't want to know how many times. I'm sure a lot of the industry people are the same where they've watched this so many times. Like, you, they just, you just know what it looks like, right? So, um, oh, here, there, there it is. This, this, this shot right here, the detail on the rocks just wasn't there versus my C9. The C9 was pin sharp to see all of this. And on this screen, it was soft. Now, again, um, burning could be an issue. Um, you know, you actually have to burn this TV in. That is true. Another thing is actually, um, I'm sure some people may have, have thought about after me explaining this, and that is um, the maintenance on the TV, the pixel cleaning. That also could be a thing. However, I did a pixel clean overnight, and um, I felt that it didn't um, make substantial improvements to this. Maybe, again, though, this is a burn-in a burn -in thing. So... Um, it just wasn't it just wasn't as pin sharp and as detailed uh there um yeah these obviously these are overexposed uh don't worry about that that is the camera this is another really good shot for ultra fine detail which i felt that it again didn't have so um this shot looked significantly different on the uh g4 uh it's just significantly different um, the reds did not pop in filmmaker mode, right? It just didn't pop. Now, I know we do have lights on, on in here, right? But this could give you an example of what to look for on this TV. Like, imagine you are sitting down and that you are actually in a black room. Because this screen is bright, you can see reflections on this part. And I know it is the light, so, you know. But that, this is actually just an example of what potentially you could see. So if you see this, look, there's black. There is an edge to the screen. Then there is the bezel. And um, the problem is, again, is uh, you, you see this difference between the edge of the screen, black, and then you see a reflection of all of this on the outside. This isn't the best example. And the best example is for you to see it in real life, right, in a completely blacked out room. So, and that's the thing, like when you buy a TV, in what scenario are you going to have the situation to demo a TV in a completely blacked out room? 
uh, well, it's not going to be a Best Buy, and it's not going to be if you just buy a random TV um, from Amazon. You can't demo it before. Um, and I do understand as well that this is a niche, very, very niche situation. But a lot of people, I'm assuming a lot of people buy OLEDs to watch them in dark rooms because that is, that is really their benefit. Sure, they don't have the brightness of um, mini LED um, and even, even LED, right? They don't have that brightness, but um, because they can achieve perfect black, it actually makes perfect blacks, it actually makes the image look even more dynamic. So even if I lose 50% brightness compared to a mini LED, I don't care because the perceived dynamics is not the same. It's just not. If you cannot produce blacks, the perceived the dynamics in this brightness just is, is not the same in a black room. Um, but yeah, the reds, the reds were off. The color red, this color red was off. And the reason I know is because I've seen it on a C9 calibrated for years, years and years. Yeah, this, uh, this disc is uh, graded differently, slightly to the first one. There was a Spears and Munsell, the first disc, which had this demo as well. Um, but, you know, when, when you're watching this content again for like basically six years, um, or uh, however long that disc was out. I'm not sure how long it has been out, actually, the first one. But uh, So, yeah, um, that that's really all I, I wanted to discuss here. Again, edge um, sharpness of things here. Just it didn't it didn't strike me uh, like the C9 does. Um, yeah. Um, oh, another thing. This is uh, good to talk about. Right. Uh, so this is bit depth and banding, right? And again, uh, I uh, again it, it would be careful with the camera though, because again this camera's exposed one way or another, and you know I wouldn't take. Um, you really just have to take my word for it of what I'm seeing. Um, there is slight uh, banding or uh, what's known as uh, posturization uh, here, and it is not at. It's not absolutely perfect. And I, again, I was kind of just surprised by that, that we the, we just have not gone far enough um, in uh, bit depth on these TVs. Um, sure, I think what I, I think what LG is doing is relying a lot on Dolby Vision, right? A lot of content on disk is Dolby Vision and it takes care of this, right? And this is why a lot of people swear by, um, you know, having Dolby Vision. Um, the thing is, again, though, I, I will say this, in, in real world stuff, I don't see, I don't see this, again, in movies. Um, one thing with movies is, as well, is if you add film grain to uh, content that is banding, um, it uh, what's the word for it? Um, you you just don't you don't see it when you add noise uh, to an image. Uh, you don't see this like step down uh, as bad. Uh, it kind of just blends in all together. So when I don't you, I never see this on the films I watch because I mean a lot of the stuff I watch is shot on film, which has film grain. Um, yeah. Uh, I think that's about all I wanted to talk about. Um, this is an another really, really nice shot, ultra high detail, but uh, essentially I felt again same same thing. So uh, another another great one, really, really good, ultra high detail. This is superb, right? This is just incredible. Uh, the feathers and the detail here. Now this looked good even on this this screen. It did. Uh, but same deal for me, uh, just perfection on my C9. It really was, it really is. So, uh, you know, I mean, the, the C9 is fully burned in, you know, I've done hours and hours and hours on that, um, professionally calibrated. So it, it has, that is an, 
The C9 is my best case scenario versus a new TV not burnt in, uh, not, not calibrated. So yeah, I can, I can definitely see that there's, there's, there's the improvement to be made. Uh, another good one, another good one. Yeah, they, these are all really good for ultra high uh, close-ups. So, um, so here's what I did was I now tested this in um, SDR. And on my C9, uh, this intro um, is absolutely perfect. So the errors only happen in HDR10. Now, um, you can't really see it. Uh, I've gone... Oh, I am on standard, yeah. Okay. I can just see it. I can just see it having issues coming out of black. And um, I think I had to replay this a few times um, as well. Uh, again, difficult to see on a, on a phone. So, but coming out of black, even in SDR, I felt it just was not quite perfect. Now, I, I consider it just about perfect on my C9, if not perfect. Um, it looks almost the same as Dolby Vision. Uh, so, I think I do a Dolby Vision here. Now, this is kind of odd. I felt the Dolby Vision version as well was a little imperfect as well. Yeah, I can't... I uh, can't really see it, um, to be fair. Can't really see it on this video. But... Um, I just saw it there. I just saw a, a wisp of it. Now, I know you, some people are thinking like, you know, this is just too picky, right? Um, but I, I, get, I just want to say the type of person that I am and what I expect from something that does cost $6,500. Now, some of this, again, this may even be due to uh, burning in the pixels, you know, the, the OLED pixels and... Uh, everything like that. So after 100 and 200 hours, this might look absolutely perfectly smooth. Um, even uh, standard HDR10 may also look much better. Um, but um, on this scene on my C9 is absolutely perfect. And on SDR, I found it to be perfect as well. And the only one that actually gave the errors were, was the HDR10. Um, and it, this did not matter how much nits it was. So even if you used, say, 600 nits, it still had the error uh, of coming out of black and it just couldn't do it. Um, I thought with the constant improvements to these TVs that this problem would have been cured in six years. And uh, it's not. It just isn't. So admittedly, this is an extremely difficult test and um, like I said I think it's a niche a uh, bit of a niche situation because I don't I have not seen this but I, in my mind I want to know that the performance of the TV really really does and really has improved over these years um, and to see even potential errors in Dolby Vision to me was disconcerting right it really was, because this is flawless, absolutely flawless on my C9. There's one other thing to say about that that maybe could make this this actually look better, because the color the colors are off anyway. If this TV was calibrated uh, perfect, then coming out all of the colors would would, would be represented perfectly as well, which means some of these lines you may not be able to see. And, and it's as it should be. Even in HDR10, a calibration may improve uh, banding and bit depth as well. It may give you smoother 
a smoother color and transition. So, yeah, um, this uh, that's that's really it. That's I wanted to just make a video about this. Um, again, if you're considering buying a new TV because the one you have is old and you have FOMO like you wouldn't believe, fear of missing out, um, I wouldn't. I really wouldn't because um, I've seen for myself now that um, I thought to myself, I convinced myself that this was the year to upgrade. The reason, One of the reasons is as well, they're using a brand new chip. Uh, this one has MLA, which allows the TV to get even brighter. I was like, I was waiting for all of the stars to align. And this TV was the, was the move that essentially made everything align. Unfortunately, again, the f pretty much the first thing I saw on the TV, my, my heart kind of sank. And, and then when I saw the reflections and stuff like that, which may not be an issue to some people, it may not. One of the things as well is I think I watch movies and I watch content way different to how other people watch them. I think um, I think other people watch their TVs in a really casual way, right? So if this had film grain, for instance, right, this, this content here, I would be looking here um, to see how film grain actually resolves and how perfect it is. Whereas... I think Joe Casual that watches this this TV, they're looking at what what's being shown here, which is the mountains, the, the, the maybe the clouds, the the environment. That, but they're watching it to not judge it. They're they're watching they're watching it to see its beauty, which I still see. But I also like to look in these weird places to see what is like what is happening to these images, you know. When, when I judge, like, say, encoding and video and things like that, there's, that's where my eyes go. I'm looking, I, I'm, all, I'm watching the movie, but I'm also looking around at things. And, um, yeah, so. Um, but, yeah, do, please, especially if you're, if, you're, if you're OLED right now, I mean, there might be some people that have maybe a, what is it, a, a B... Or, a, or, or uh, was there? I don't know what TVs were before the C9. I think maybe a C8 or a C7. I'm assuming they went there, right, with the numbers. Um, I mean, the C9 is a great TV. I think it did make some really big changes. But if you do have those displays and you are happy with them, and say you got it professionally calibrated like I did, I am. Um, I'm telling you right now, I don't think you're missing out on much. You, you're not. And to to spend that much money, six thousand five hundred, to be out six thousand five hundred dollars, to get these minor, it, it, when everything is burned in, right? To get these minor improvements, I, it just what it just wasn't worth it to me, right? And, um, you know, you get these reflections on the side of the screen like that. And I'm just like, it, there's no way. It's impossible for me to, it's impossible for me to enjoy this TV. Now, from a technical point of view, again, when everything's burnt in, it's true, this TV could even win TV, uh, TV of the year, right? Unquestionably. Um, now, this is interesting, whether a 77-inch actually looks better than an 83 uh, because again of the pixels and making everything look really pin sharp it's it, it's maybe a consideration as well that the 77 inch does look better and maybe a, say a 77 inch is like the perfect screen size for 4k I don't know I'm just openly talking here I don't know but again to me the going going from 77 to 83 I could now see the softness in the image because it was bigger um yeah and I, like i said i just didn't like it so um yeah so when the fomo is so heavy that you feel as though you just have to upgrade just 
sit just sit because I'm one of those girls that do get very excited about new tech and it's like oh I, I am missing out on this I really I need to upgrade because if I don't I am that's it it's, it's you know um, this TV is essentially excuse me has taught me um, to you know to relax you know relax on this um, you aren't missing out on much um, now the C9 does have uh, potential just as you get right down into black it just starts to crush which is actually typical of all OLEDs all uh, even this one would do it but just probably to a lesser extent um, they all do it um, but it's what are you willing to accept like um, a lot of movies are actually just above black like if you see a Christopher Nolan movie there's no blacks in there there's no inky blacks in Christopher Nolan movies because all of his films are sh all of his movies are shot on film and he retains this above black look anyway so uh, it is a rare situation where I would say oh I can absolutely tell that is crushing um, you know so uh, the my TV I think I think my TVs the C9 has been calibrated so well we got it calibrated for a second time because um, our calibrator said look there's been improvements in the software and for your TV and firmware updates right there was a lot of issues uh, with uh, the C9 when it first came out so we just decided to recalibrate and the difference you could tell the difference we increased black level detail because I said to the calibrator, I was like, when, um, when the, one of the firmwares kicked in, um, I don't know which one it was. It was like a year and a half. It was like in mid-2019. Uh, there was a firmware update that came out for the C9. And I, what I did was I reset the TV uh, to default because I knew it was going to be recalibrated. And I said to the calibrator, I'm like, the black levels are much better. Much, much better since this firmware update. So, um, yeah. Uh, I'm, look, I'm, I have my C9 back in now. It's back, back installed. And I am extremely happy with it. Um, it just took me a purchase of this display to realize what an incredible TV I have. So, um, I I do feel a little bad like that I had to return the TV because I'm not a person that would abuse um, me being able to return things. Um, but when it is $6,500 plus paying for the stand, which is peanuts, but I just didn't feel as though I was going forward in uh, what I look for in picture quality, right? And uh, yeah, maybe it may be a super niche situation. But anyone, if you are like me, if you are like the two people um, that watch my videos and are as picky um, about picture quality as I am, there'd be no way you could uh, consider this TV because, because of the bezel. You know, forget everything else. Again, it could, that just could be burning. I can't, I can't watch, uh, I couldn't watch anything like this. Um, now some people have also said about um, using a material to um, cover this um, and or using a, a pen to, like, you know, to blacken it. I can't, I can't do that. I'm, I'm a type of person that I cannot like feel as though I'm destroying my TV and the way it looks um, to cover up a design floor from LG. I just, I can't do that. All right. I can't, I can't get a pen and start blacking things out and things like that. I, I, that's just not, I don't, I don't want to do that. That's just not who I am. And I, I just wouldn't want to do that to my TV. I don't want my TV to look that way. I just don't. I just want it to be made um, in a better way. My C9 does not have this. It's black. The edge is black. So I cannot tell where the edge of the screen is. And it allows for a better immersion into the movies and things that I watch. And again, this is for me the reason why I bought an OLED. Um, 
So yeah, that is my experience with the G4. And um, I'm really hoping to appeal to um, people that do have a fear of missing out on the new tech. And even really to appeal to a certain number of video files out there that um, really need to be aware of this reflective problem because I don't think uh, I don't think you'd be able to accept it either so some people may watch this TV and it will even uh, even if they've watched this video they may still not be bothered by it because again they they you view the TV in a different way than I than I view it right and that's fine if you enjoy the TV, enjoy the TV. I think it is a great display from a technical point of view. Uh, and really, this, this is the biggest flaw of, of the TV. I, I think everything else could have been a burn-in issue. And uh, over time, I think the TV would, be, uh, would become even better. Then you put a professional calibration on it. Yeah, I, I think um, it would be good. But um, yeah. I was, uh, but I, I was done, right? After 24 hours of installing the TV, um, we took the stand off, we brought the TV down, and I said, yeah, I'm done. I, uh, I couldn't enjoy this TV. So um, that, is, uh, that is the state of my TV situation right now. Um, some people have said, hey, you could have went for the C4. Some people have said you could have went for a mini uh, LED. I can't, uh, I will never have a mini LED unless it can produce perfect blacks. So this black um, uh, curtain uh, that I had, we had installed, if I can tell the difference between this black background here and say a 235 border, then uh, I can't watch it. And it's simple as that. I'm not going to do it because I'm already at this level of an LG C9. The TV I buy next has to be better than the LG C9. And this TV in this situation was not better. Uh, it would, yeah, I, there's no, there's just no way. It would be complaint after complaint after complaint of me what watching this until I would go crazy uh, by, by, by seeing this so um, yeah um, yeah I mean look, if you have the TV let me know what you think think about it I hope I, uh, I hope I haven't put you off of it too much but if, if this is something you see as well and you are put off by it um, you know you you have the opportunity here to return a TV, right? Even we felt bad for the idea of having to return a TV, but the whole goal here is, is or, or the situation here is, I bought a product, I was not happy with the product. It, it, you can put it in that simple terms, right? It did not meet my expectations of what I already had. And um, I can't feel bad about that. Right, I'm not going to feel bad about that. So we uh, we're setting up the return uh, now, and um, yeah, that's it. Um, let me know what you think. Um, have you ever had an experience like this where you've uh, upgraded your TV and you felt that it actually wasn't an upgrade, or the upgrade wasn't significant enough um, for you to kind of feel as though you've wasted your money, right? Um, so yeah, just let me know what you think, um, please, uh, in the comments. I appreciate you watching. Uh, I know this is a long video, like all of my videos, but you know, I just like to try and iron out and talk about everything here and my entire experience. So have a great day and thanks for watching. Bye.